and welcome to this evening's session. We have with us Odette Katrak, who's an environment and sustainability change maker, working for a cleaner, cleaner city, a prouder nation, and a greener planet through beautiful Bharat, the citizen volunteer group she co-founded earlier, Beautiful Bangalore. She has a professional experience of over 30 years, including as a soft skills trainer consultant working on behavior change. For the last decade, she has dedicated her time to environment and social causes with several successful mass interventions to her credit. She's also a writer and through her articles, including a past column for the Times of India, pushes for the active involvement of every citizen to be the change. She was recognized by her alma mater, XLRI Jamshedpur, for her contribution to society through the Distinguished Alumni Award. Her current priority is one of the most challenging, to stop India spitting, and in her words, is one that can convert the COVID pandemic into a turning point for spitting in India. She has been a crusader in the fight against public spitting and is championing its nationwide movement for which she was recognized by NDTV on Banega Swachh India in the 2021 Republic Day series. She also received the Samvahana Award by Public Relations Council of India in connection with her impactful strategies for driving habit change in the ground, on the ground. Odette's movement in India has also reached countries abroad. She's incidentally also a poet whose poems have been shared by Shobha Day and Ayo Shraddha. Audit believes that every individual can make a difference by playing their part and lives each day with a quest to make a deep impact through sustainable interventions while continuing to inspire everyone around her to lead a life that is kinder to the planet. Audit, over to you. Uh, thank you, Matilda. Thank you so much. And uh, I think uh, I'm not muted. Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, I think um, maybe since we have a smaller group, we can do it slightly differently than I intended. I have a presentation and I have three smaller parts to it. Uh, but let me just start talking by uh, about why I'm doing what I'm doing and what I think each of you who've made it to this talk can actually play a role. And uh, maybe after each of the three parts, the smaller parts, I'll pause to have some interaction. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, I think whichever religion we look at, we all believe that the earth, this, this earth, this planet is a gift from our creator. For Christians, we have Genesis and the beautiful description of the creation. And every religion has this uh, uh, thing about our earth being sacred. So the thing is, in our day-to-day -day lives, uh, we often end up, you know, not valuing this gift of the earth without realizing it in simple, small ways. And that's what I'm going to talk about. And I think each of us today, each of you who have come to this talk has the power to be a change maker for a better world, for a greener planet. And the, the simple ways we can do it is because you don't have to spend hours and hours. You might be a busy person saying, I don't have time for all this, right? But we all go to buy vegetables. We all go to uh, uh, eat out at a restaurant. We give gifts to people. We buy um, flowers to give people. So in doing all of these small things, we may inadvertently be doing things that actually foul up our air, foul up our planet, uh, spoil our soil, spoil our water. And those are a few things I'm going to cover and share with you. Uh, I'm going to share my screen now. 
Yeah. Right. So I'm going to start by sharing with you four clips which really make you will not none of you will ever wonder that you know sometimes you think is there really a god look at this beautiful creation so this is all things stuff that click pictures that i've clicked in my balcony this greedy caterpillar who ate up my curry leaf plant and then he converted to this chrysalis and i actually captured the moment of this butterfly hatching there's another series of a different kind of butterfly and between two plants, that is my curry leaf plant and another red uh, flower, blood flower, I constantly have butterflies in, in my balconies. Right now, as we speak, I have five caterpillars and five chrysalis waiting to hatch. And those of you with children, it is so wonderful if you can bring this and they see this at home all the time. So two ways in which we can impact is our own individual actions on the ground, and the second is networking. So if anything I say makes sense and you think of a friend, let's say you have somebody in Baroda or Calcutta and you say, oh, I wish she could connect with Odette because she would be, I'm looking to launch Stop India Spitting in different parts of the country. It's slowly happening, but as a movement driven by an individual with no funds and no volunteers to speak of very, very few, I can count on one hand, it becomes really difficult. So any, any uh, uh, networking is going to be very useful. So three things I'm going to focus on. Water, which we all know is crucial to life. Waste, because we all generate waste. Obviously, the goal is to have as little waste as possible. Though many people believe, never mind, I've got my waste. I've, I've dis, uh, you know, dis, discarded it well in a nice bag. It's going out. I'll talk about that. And the third is how each of us can be an ambassador to the movement of Stop India Spitting. So this scene is a scary scene. I'm going to spend five minutes on water. And if you look at this, I think most are from Bangalore. There could be some from out. That's how our green cover is getting changed, replaced more and more concrete. And that is disastrous because that means water is a real, real um, problem. These are scenes I click every morning in my neighborhood. I, there's a lot of jokes that people crack at my expense because this article came out one year on World Environment Day. Yes, I do bathe with three mugs of water and I'm going to show you how uh, it is possible. But I also need to add that no, I don't smell because it is possible to uh, optimize on the amount that you use without compromising on the end result. So I have a, a, a theory and there are two very, very simple uh, aspects to this how we can use more, how we can reuse, uh, use less and reuse more. And I'm going to show this to you through pictures. First of all, your tap flow. Most people routinely open it to this, but actually if you see, you bring it to a trickle, the last part is enough for most of the jobs we do. So that's number one. Number two, so why use more when less will do? Number two is, no tap on when you're, you put it off when you don't need it. Like when you're rinsing or brushing your teeth, washing your face, why must the tap be on? Which a lot of people don't realize. So that's the second. Third is washing vegetables, washing fruits, washing a car, running water is the worst way. A cloth. So I, I have lots of images for all of these, but because of shortage of time, I'm doing a very you know quick, crisp uh, one of uh, each of them. And the third is to stop leaks. A leaking tap is really a disaster. One night I was very sleepy a few years ago. I realized my tap was leaking and I just pushed the bucket underneath it. And in the morning when I woke up, the bucket was not just full, it was overflowing. So that leaking tap, so you think about it. Each of us does these four things, influencing our families collectively what a lot of water we can save. Uh, would anyone, now I'm coming to the point too, would anyone use mineral water to bathe? Anyone would like to answer that question? Anyone here bathes with mineral water? I use uh, mineral water to wash my hair. Okay, Donna, so you to do that for a specific reason, but I'm saying, uh, would you shift your default water all the time to mineral water and the answer I get, especially from students during webinars, that why would anyone be crazy 
to waste such expensive pure water for something like that, right? That's the answer. But what if I tell you that each and every one of us does a lot of this in, in different ways. So we take fresh water out of a tap to rinse our dirty dishes, to rinse our pochas. We don't think twice, right? It's fresh water out of a tap. But think about it. Do you really need that purity of water? So what can you use instead? And here I'm giving you, uh, th these are all the various needs that we have for, uh, for water in our homes. I have put this as a, a presentation. It is there on my Instagram. I think I put it out in on World Water Day, so sometime in March. Uh, so all of these today, we are using fresh water out, out of a tap. But now we need to start thinking, what can we use differently? So if you have an RO, the wastewater, uh, when you wash hands, when you wash vegetables, collect that water in a bowl, like I showed you earlier. The washing machine outlet water, the pocha water that you use. So I use bioenzyme, not phenyl. So my RO water, which I use, is then used for pocha. And that pocha uh, water is then used to water the plants. So in another home, those two buckets of RO waste water, which is 50 liters, might have gone waste. Here, those 50 liters are actually being used for swabbing and then for uh, watering. So that's equivalent of six buckets safe. So there's so many different ways. Try it out. So this is the framework which tells you that if you know what are the kinds of uh, needs that you have, they don't all need fresh water. You can use, uh, you know, different varieties of water. I usually do a one hour talk on this, but as I'm giving it to you as a snapshot, I'm just uh, moving forward. Anyone interested, I can give you my email ID and contact. Please connect for more. Right. So that is about water. And the truth is, it is possible. These are, this is a summary. Uh, use less, low tap. Our aerators are also good, but nothing like an ingrained low flow. Put the tap off when you're not in, uh, you don't need a water flow. Avoid running water, fix leaks. And as I said, reuse more. Keep collecting water and see what you can reuse it for. So if I'm washing my slippers, I don't need to take fresh water out of a tap. I can take the soapy water, which, you know, my washing machine water let out, right? So that's about water. Let me pause and ask anyone uh, who has any suggestion or anything you want to say, uh, because I think we all agree that water is... It is definitely something that is a, a very valuable part of, um, there's no water, life without water. There's no life on our planet. So does anyone have anything you wish to add, comment? Does it make sense? Does it not make sense? Any questions? Is it really feasible? Oh, I have a question. Uh, yes, Donna. Donna, yeah. So, um, so I, I do have, I do most of what you are mentioning right now, right? Um, the only thing that I don't do, which I've seen where you were saying is to use, reuse the RO water that is, you know, being wasted because equal amount of RO water gets wasted yes. when you're filling. That's my understanding. Yes. Um, but what I've heard, so I just want you to correct me is yeah. the RO water is actually the waste that is coming yes. after the purification is done. So there is good amount of, uh, you know, waste material in that. Yes. like lime and all that so yes. wouldn't it be wouldn't it be harmful if you use you know your pocha clothes like you know if you're mopping clothes in that to wash because you're again then convert you know moving that dirt and also in, eventually you're telling us to add it to the plants right yes so yes. isn't that going to be harmful Is yes so this has been verified by a lot of people because this doubt has often comes up and there are many people like i have been doing this now, now i can't remember for how many years my plants are the healthiest plants and uh, there's no problem in doing it unless it, let's say it's something like a spinach leaf where you're going to eat the leaf. It might be safer to use fresh plants, but for gardens, washing balconies, there is, there, it's, it's confirmed to be fine to use. So there is no problem with that. Or if you're, if you're worried, let's say about pocha, you can use it for different uh, other uses, like say wa wa uh, washing. Many people here wash driveways, uh, you know, the driveway, the balconies, it can be used for that also. But plants, definitely no problem. And uh, because I compost and I use fresh compost, my plants are constantly getting nutrients. So what I have been told by experts on this is the nutrients I'm feeding my plants far exceed any 
of the trace minerals which are not uh, um, may not be suitable. Okay, any other question on this? And otherwise we can move to the next bit, which is a very important part because we all generate waste. And Donna? I'll give you 10 simple ways that we can uh, each, you know, uh, actually turn around what we do in our homes. Donna, another reason why Odette can use her uh, pocha water for the plants is she uses bioenzymes. She doesn't yes. use chemical yes. phenyls. Yes. And uh, Odette, it would be nice if you could briefly tell us how to make these bioenzymes. I didn't think of doing that, but give me a minute. I'll just bring my bottle, which is right here. Hold on. Yeah. Anybody else has any other questions? So this is, this is uh, something I have all the time on my kitchen counter. And that's one way to reduce the waste you generate. Every fruit peel that you eat. It could be citrus, that is any kind of lime, lemon. Pineapple is also very good. Uh, mash melon, wa watermelon, I'll tell you something else that you can do. Uh, but all fruits, mango, if you take three parts of the fruit, one part of jaggery, a pinch of yeast and 10 parts of water, put it in a container. There should be sufficient gap above it because if it generates uh, a gas, so the gas needs to escape. Once a day, you open it, stir it, let out the gas, a pinch of yeast will make it ready in three weeks. And if you don't use yeast, you're going to take six weeks, strain it out. And the liquid is perfect for adding to pocha water. It has a lovely, lovely um, fruity flavor, depending on which fruit you use. Sometimes I mix fruits. It doesn't have to be only one fruit. And the strained portion is wonderful for cleaning sinks, for polishing brass. So that's one very good way to utilize uh, your bioenzyme. Okay, so let me move to the next portion. Uh, is that okay? I'll share my screen again. Yeah, just one moment. Three yes, portions. Madeline. Three portions of uh, fruit. Three peel. portions of fruit. One portion of jaggery. Yeah. Ten portions of water. Okay. And a pinch of yeast. Okay. Okay. All yeah. right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So coming back here now to the second part of it. You can see my screen again. Yeah. yeah. So so any guesses what this is? This is a picture I clicked on a trip uh, when I was in Delhi. Anyone wants to guess what this is? Anyone who's been to Delhi and knows your mountain ranges? Is it a landfill? It is a landfill. You know, when I passed by, the, when I went this way after maybe 10 years of uh, visiting that area, 10 years later, and I thought to myself, I didn't remember there were any hills here. This is a, a landfill. It is nothing but waste. It's the Balswa landfill. Uh, what is uh, worse is I have contributed to it because for 10 years I lived in Delhi, that is 86 to 96. And every single day, this is how my waste went out. One plastic bag of mixed waste. At the time, we didn't know better. And yes, I gave it, but, and it was mixed waste, right? I think what goes around comes around, as you say. So this is Balswa landfill. It is so full of filth. It is constantly on fire. That trip I passed, passed it four times. It, every single time it was uh, smoldering on one side. This is my daughter's whose campus is 30 kilometers away from Balswa. Today we all wear masks and a, a site like this is not something unusual. This was in 2018. Balswa landfill burnt for 21 days and they could not step out without masks. Okay, so today masks are serving a different purpose, but it's all coming around to the way we are treating our in, in environment. So waste, if you do, this is, these are pictures I've taken in different parts of the city. Either they are dumped or they are burnt or the third is they are dumped into the lake. Right. So what I'm saying is 10 different ways each of us, I'll, I'll go through those 10 ways and show you the pictures. So first of all, the waste we generate, we have to scrupulously segregate into wet, dry and reject. That is 
anything that is recyclable that can go to your kabadi wala only that goes into dry a biscuit is dry it does not go into dry onion skins are dry they don't go into dry anything organic which is food uh, uh, based which can be composted goes into green and literally what goes into your reject waste is like stuff like sweeping uh, dirt hair which may fall um sanitary waste literally that's the only thing that should go into your reject waste so if we all do, did this our waste would come down literally to 5% of the total and we would not have such a waste burden in our country so the first step is segregation it is truly a responsibility of every one of us nobody realized it all those years ago now we are more realizing it more so if wherever you live there is no segregation please try to push today there are enough volunteer groups across the city particularly in bangalore but across the country and if anyone says we don't have segregation in our area we'd like to start it, it, there are, please can i'll connect it with you or through matilda we can definitely connect you with people who can take a segregation session so i was actively involved when i first came here in 2015 to bangalore in segregation both in our at our layout level waste pickup and our layout today has one of the best percentages of segregated waste so number one segregation is really really important okay now i am uh, showing you a set of three pictures because we all buy food all the time we all eat stuff all the time and many people are not aware what's okay what's not okay so take a good look at this picture you can see that aluminium foil bag in the right side all of these are plastic lined right so many of the uh, roadside vendors give you stuff in this all of these bags are plastic the one the orange bag if you can look closely it it's not plastic it's that fiber bag that is also a form of plastic non -woven, woven polypropylene nwpp it is banned in karnataka and many states it is definitely not okay and if you look at all the other things on the top uh, they all look like paper plate no they all have a plastic lining any of the silver plates you see they're definitely banned thermocol is banned so that is something i would like all of you to see now paper cups are banned actually according to to the uh, the solid waste management rules but i don't know can you see this paper cup which i'm showing you you can yes. see the, the the you just soak a paper cup for 10 minutes and then with your finger if you do this you'll see the paper coming away and you'll see the plastic lining otherwise paper cannot hold uh, tea or coffee so there are two angles to a paper cup which i'll i'll come to shortly but these are banned items all these plastic spoons and now you have plastic spoons which they put a silver coating to look like steel that doesn't make it any uh, better for the planet plastic cup pits paper cups this is the second level which is not banned which is slightly better like paper bags are definitely better than plastic bags but paper bags come from trees so if we all shift from plastic bags to paper bags we are compromising our tree resources and uh, many of the wooden things all these papers so, but and they are still generating waste because they are single use disposables therefore the best option is to shift to reusables always carry your bag always carry your own bottle let me tell you something interesting we did for the all uh, our parish um fet two years back we haven't had a fet since then we we had that fet where uh, probably i don't know maybe 500 families come and it's a whole day affair there's lot of food sa uh, sales going on so what we did if you can see me you can see me still right yes yes right so if uh, we we put up this so this was the first prize this bottle and we had three steel bottles for the th second third prizes and we told people if you bring your own uh, plates for byoc it's called bring your own containers uh, you get to put your name in a lucky dip and we'll have a lucky dip at the end and these were the four prizes and we tried this for the first year we announced it in two masses uh we showed this poster this poster was put in front of the church for 2 3 weeks and we had 73 people who took part in uh, that lucky dip and uh, the waste was therefore definitely less right 73 people uh, 73 families if who come and that many paper plates and cups and all so that is a very good uh, 
uh, a trick to follow. I see An Annabelle, you are here. Yes, she was. She was not there because she heard about this from me and she, she tried did. it in her parish and it was a success there as well. So anyone who's organizing any event, Annabelle, you are there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here. Okay, do you want to do you want to give us the experience of when you tried this? I'll just stop my share. Yes, I did the same thing in my church, and initially people were not uh, like not everyone was forthcoming. They said uh, they weren't like agreeing, and then I had to talk to them and tell them about it, and uh, like tell them the benefits of bringing their own plate that it would reduce the the garbage. And uh, we did have a good response and many people did take part in it. And uh, like in the same way, I also gave out uh, the prizes at the end of the day. So that was wonderful. Very thankful. They were thankful to me. And uh, so we wanted to have it the next year, but then the COVID, uh, the pandemic happened. So we've not had it ever since. So that's wonderful. But I'd also like to say one thing that everyone who attended that uh, one minute, one minute, one minute, everyone who attended that, um, uh, what did we call it, FET, yeah, everyone came to know about this because when the prizes were given, first of all, as at the table, I was there at the table with this poster and the bottles and people would keep coming and saying, auntie, how can I get this bottle? So I told them I, I would have conversations with them. So this bottle is a way, is a prize, but you're also giving a gift back to your planet because you will stop using mineral water bottles. And so it became, everyone became aware of the need to reduce waste. And um, I, I tell you how I thought of this idea of this BYOC Lucky Dip. We had an event in our area for the Durga Puja when they have the Bengali Puja. So maybe hundreds of families come and I had carried our BYOC, our plates. So four of us were there with our plates and one of my neighbors passed by and laughed at me and said, ha ha, only your family will do such crazy things to carry your own plate. Others, why, why will others care? So I thought to myself, yes, correct. Why will others care? Let's give them a reason to care. And I said, let's give them something to, you know, I'm carrying my plate, but maybe I'll win that bottle. So that's how the idea came. And I have shared this idea on many groups and many people have tried it. So now that life is going back to normal after COVID and we are having a lot of events everywhere, please think of this trick. I have the poster template. If you connect me, I'll be very happy to give you this poster template. And all you have to do is, you know, put your own, you'll have to buy the bottle and get someone to sponsor. Right. So let me come back to my presentation. So these are the, the reusable things are definitely the way to go. So there are three angles. One is it, it, anything that's non-biodegradable is not good, like plastic bags, those aluminum foil things, right? These paper cups are also no longer biodegradable when they have plastic, right? The next level is eco-friendly, which is paper. But as I said, paper, it, it's, it's avoiding the waste. Uh, it's avoiding the biodegradable, non-biodegradable waste, but it's still generating waste and using planet's resources. The third thing is what we call sustainable. So it is so easy to lead a sustainable life, lifestyle with simple habits. So I'm going to show you a lot of pictures. That paper cup actually can hold liquid. All the rest on the side is not a hole, but it's plastic. And this is the scene when you have lots of paper cups, right? They get burned. What happens when we burn our waste? It makes, a, a, it pollutes our air. It puts a lot of dioxins, furans. And can you see this drain full of uh, paper cups, right? So in our area, how you can become, uh, what should I say, change makers in your area? We went to all the pawn shop, the tea shop guys and told them that if you start using this, you will save money on paper cups and we'll make you heroes because we'll put your photo everywhere. This was before COVID. All the eight uh, chai vendors in our area had switched to this. And they were very happy because their pay photos would be sh shared. People would come back, show them the photo on the phone. So it encouraged them. So this is really something simple that you can do but definitely try to stop using paper cups, carry a steel cup in your 
uh, 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 bag. Look at these. These are all roadside foods with all banned items, right? At some time in the past, I have to confess, I have also done all of these and eaten all of these before I realized the impact. But working so closely with waste, it you know, I cringe to see these thermocol um, uh, bowls. Thermocol doesn't, doesn't biodegrade. These plastic bags mixed with everything. These uh, plastic uh, uh, forks also just get chucked, right? There, there's no chance of them getting recycled, even, even if actually they are uh, recycled. So these are the simple ways that uh, we can, we can uh, uh, prevent this. Uh, one more important thing I have to say that anything hot, when it connects with plastic, hot tea in a paper cup, hot vada on this thermocol or on this, all of that actually is carcinogenic. It impacts our own health. Forget about the planet's health for, for, a, for, a time, for the time being. We are putting ourselves up for cancer. So uh, these, if you look at this picture, this is what is okay. This kind of paper, this kind of foil uh, container in a cloth bag, and this foil container can be recycled if you put it in your dry waste and the bag uh, used over and over again. So this guy on the left used to have this plastic sheet and I explained to him, now he shifted to banana leaves. So the point is we may all pass by these vendors, we may all eat from them, but can we slowly now start getting them to change? It is actually possible. So this was the BYOC event. Uh, when the guy, I clicked this picture before we left, when the guy made fun of me and that gave rise to opportunity of BYOC Lucky Dip. Why we don't, why mineral water bottles should be avoided. So that's another picture. And uh, plastic straws again, another disaster. Plastic bags, so simple to carry your own bags. This is how, so the one picture on the left is plastic bags. The picture on, so that is definitely bad, it's banned. The picture in the middle is not banned, but what a lot of paper uh, bags wasted, right? Instead switch to reusable bags. So this is a favorite gift that I give people. And any number of, this, these bags, I, which I, you see in the picture, I'm using now for the eighth or ninth year in a row. You can just wash them, reuse them. So, so this is something that every one of us, of course you also have cloth produce bags. I prefer something where I can see what's inside. The cloth produce bags on the right. When you buy eggs, use this reusable uh, container rather than even the paper egg trays or plastic egg trays, they're generating waste. Coming to flowers, we all give flowers, right? So the plastic sheet and plastic ribbon are actually banned. The one on the right you think is paper, It's if you tear it, it doesn't tear easily. That is again NWPP or non-woven polypropylene. These are definitely to be banned. In all religions, there are flowers. If you go outside temples, what is so unfortunate is they give you the flowers right there in a plastic bag. Before COVID, again, all the flower vendors in our area, we had got them to shift to wrapping it in newspaper and string or banana leaves. That's, it's time to start that again. So while you may not be excited about, you know, telling other vendors to change, well, one thing we can do is change our own habits by making sure when you're stepping out, carry your bag. If you feel thirsty like me, always carry this bottle. It's always there in my bag. It's a glass bottle with a silicone sleeve. It has fallen. It is not broken. So for, carry the kind of bottle that's it's reusable. Even a plastic bottle is okay, as long as it's continued to be reused. Now, in uh, the Christian offertories that we do, I'm sure there are offerings in other religions. Uh, look at that. You can have a lot of plastic on this as well. But the best, and many places you still have the plastic. Look at the picture on the right, how, how good it looks. The picture on the left, I have clicked at a funeral because every bouquet that people give or wreath has plastic in it. Unfortunately, I have seen funerals where all this gets dumped on top of the coffin. Imagine the body of the person being buried will decompose, but this these plastic uh, um, sheets will be there for 500 minimum years. Nobody knows how long they will be there for. What is worse is in the midst of that, they have biodegradable material, which will decompose and generate methane, which is trapped. And that becomes very dangerous. So it is so simple. Next time you're giving flowers or you're in an area where there are flowers, please make sure to use something in a container that is reusable. Marguerite, that is a bouquet you had made when I had clicked. I hope you recognize it. 
The next thing is I use Richard Gere to remind people on Valentine's Day and all of these in our posters. You can even have bouquets with, so the one on the left is paper from a shoe box, which a shoe, a pair of shoes, which I had bought and chocolate ribbon. This is cloth, the middle one, cloth from a tailor. And this is junk cloth, which they were throwing away. Matilda, we were talking about tailor scraps, right? This is what yeah. I got from a tailor. And jute, if you use, you can reuse it over and over again. So anyone who's giving flowers in the future, don't you agree these bouquets look so much better than those plastic ones? So what I'd ask you never again is to give out bouquets which have uh, uh, the non-biodegradable materials, number one. Number two, try to influence people who, uh, the, the vendors who sell if you can, and three people who give you these, it is a bit awkward, I know. We have wonderful posters, share our posters with them. Third is gifts and gift wrapping. I used to, uh, till maybe seven, eight years back for Christmas, I used to go out of my way to buy colorful paper like this and Christmas colors, wrap my gifts in it. Till I realized that this is also non-biodegradable. Not only that, it is banned, yet our stores sell them. So on the left is the bad, definitely to be avoided. Coming festivals onwards, coming gifts, no more plastic ribbons and a shiny foil wrapping. Better to use reusable wrapping with news, uh, newspaper, uh, which is still okay, and reusable ribbons or string. And the third is reusable wrapping. The, the blue wrapping is actually a, a cloth bag. Um, so that's, a, I think Matilda through the, the cell that they have and the women do a lot of stitching of cloth bags. So the, the green, uh, the, the red checked one is actually a small tablecloth. So different, the, the other red one is a, um, um, serviette. So different, the, the checked one. So different ways, find out ways in which you can wrap your gifts in a more in it, innovative way that makes it really sustainable. Giving flowers. It's one thing, giving plants is also very good. Uh, I don't have a picture from yesterday where I, I had gifted a, a, a couple who married uh, two months back and uh, three small pots. And I have a picture then and yesterday they sent me the pot and how the plant has grown and they were so excited. And because of my three pots, they now have 10 more pots. So to grow, to have greenery around, to bring ourselves close to nature is very good. At a party, look at the top, look at the bottom. So nice to have reusables. Yes, it's extra work. But if you have bioenzymes, for example, uh, when you have bioenzymes and you have lots of dishes, you take a bowl with water, plain water, dip all your, um, let's say the spoons. And if it's plates, even you take a cloth, wipe, wipe the, uh, the, the, you know, curry off it. And then you put dip it into plain water, second tub of water with bioenzyme, and that itself is a disinfectant. So using bioenzyme, you use so little water to wash a lot of dishes, reduces the effort, and then you can just wipe it clean. And then that the bioenzyme water can be reused for plants or even poured down the sink because it's uh, it has actually got good, um, what should I say, um, um, biodiverse material, which helps the uh, health of the sewage uh, system. Those plastic spoons are definitely a no. I kept it to show you the contrast. Likewise, when you're at a restaurant, whether it's mineral water, straws. Uh, so if you look at this, hankies versus paper tissues, it's always better to carry your own hanky. And Matilda, that's another thing your girls can do. Start doing embroidery, embroidered hankies. So yeah. to sum up, these are very simple. Carry your own bag, carry your own bottle your own cup, your own containers, avoid plastic straws, then for flowers and gifts, shifting to handkerchiefs, segregate waste. All of these are really simple. So I'll pause here, stop my share, any comments, and then we'll do a last 10 minutes. Though we started late and I would still not like to go up till 8.15. Um, but I will spend 10 minutes telling you about Stop India Spitting, what, it, what we aim to do and how anyone can be a part of that. So anyone has any uh, questions that you'd like or anything to add on? Anyone wants to unmute and, or should I proceed to the third part? Maybe you proceed and then later. Okay. 
All right, all right. Okay, so coming to the third part, let me come to this. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to share my screen again because you can uh, see it much faster this way. Yeah, so in March 2020, when COVID first came, we were being told about only three things. We were being told about masks, distancing, wash your hands. There was I washing my hands and we were being told about that extra 20 seconds lathering, which probably many didn't do till then. There was I doing this when I looked out of my window and I saw a man sitting. Uh, it's a dead end leading to a slum. And I said, oh my gosh, here we're taking all this trouble. And the government isn't doing anything, anything about spitting. The same day we took out a petition, which went viral. It crossed 41,000 in those three weeks. And on April 15th, it was a petition to the prime minister saying that spitting should be punished. We also had an open letter asking that besides making spitting punishable, PM should speak about this in Monkey Bath. April 15th, spitting became punishable, 2020. April 26th, he spoke about Monkey Bath. But... And the ground, nothing really changed. If you see this, I think somebody is not muted and it's making a noise. So uh, Donna, if you could just mute whoever's uh, uh, screen is making the noise. So while we continue to hope, when I say we, it is beautiful Bengaluru, now renamed as beautiful Bharat. We are a volunteer group. We don't have funds. Matilda is part of that group. We don't have funds. We have a few active volunteers who are constantly trying to network and help. I'm happy to say Matilda is one of them. And with a real handful of people, we are able to spread this message. Matilda also, for example, connected me with a group in Kolkata. And with their help, we launched the Stop India Spitting Kolkata chapter. They have now further networked with the Industry Institute of Psychology and Research, who are now carrying out um, sessions in slums, telling people that spitting is not okay, spitting spreads COVID, please stop, because our government isn't doing that. So the point is, you see people wearing masks. You can see me still, right? They are wearing masks, they lift it, spit, and putting, put it back. That tells you clearly they don't get the link with COVID and uh, spitting, more so because it is not being reinforced by our government but it also tells you that it is a basic lack of knowledge in a majority of people not to say some don't know some know and they don't care but many people don't know so the first thing that we need to do is create this awareness as individuals for sure we can in two ways one is we all have maids drivers we have our building guards we have the shops we visit to let me tell you the story of the first time after lockdown when I went to buy vegetables to my local shop. And at that time, the whole thing was very scary. You'll all remember. It was like this unseen enemy, you know, sci-fi movie, at least the enemy is some grotesque monster. Here it is an invisible enemy. So there was I wearing my mask. I went to the shop. The boy gave me my vegetables. He had a hanky tied, a filthy hanky it was, I have to say. He gave me my vegetables. He went to the beginning, uh, start of the shop, lifted his hanky, spat, uh, spat came back. And 10 years back, I would have freaked out. I also freaked out, but my response was different. I called the shop owner. I said, you call all your boys. I explained to them, why are we wearing masks? We are wearing masks because there is something we can't see, which is spreading. So imagine if you're spitting, you're spreading it so fast. You know, people come to shop for free gift. Buy one, get one free. They will all come to know. If you go to this shop, you will get COVID free. Nobody will come to your shop. So I joked about it. They laughed. I explained to them and I told them you can't spit anywhere and everywhere. The next day I went to the shop uh, with a sign. Two years later, that sign is very much still there. And that is another thing that I request each of you to help with. That is putting up signs. I'll come to that. But the first part is having conversations that explain to people spitting is no longer okay. If you pass. So there are two ways. One is the preemptive conversations. The second is the incident based conversations. So you're walking on the street, somebody spits. Let me share a, 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 a cartoon with you. But let me first say that we started on the platform of COVID. So this image on the left, Karnataka government has now incorporated no spitting 
as one of the four COVID appropriate behaviors. Hope there is no fourth wave, but the advisory which went out three weeks back from government of Karnataka specified no spitting directly linked to the campaign and the push and the interaction that we have been having. But does it mean after COVID goes away, it's okay for everyone to spit happily ever after? No, because TB is a big problem. If we had more time, I would like to have asked a few questions, but for shortage of time, let me summarize that in the two years till now, COVID has killed, anyone knows the answer? Anyone who knows the answer would like to give uh, uh, how many people have died due to COVID in India totally till now in these two years? If anyone knows, please unmute and tell me. I know it only because I specifically keep checking because of this. It is 5.23 lakhs currently. Uh, we hope it doesn't keep going up. Any guesses how many people die from TB every single year in India in relation to that 5.2 lakhs? I'd like somebody to take a guess. Anybody willing to guess? If 5.2 lakhs totally have died from COVID in two years, how many have died die per year from TB? What, just take a wild guess. Maybe no, a lakh. Yeah? A lakh. It is 4.4 lakhs. I was myself shocked to come to know when uh, I, I tried to understand more about the subject. So you can imagine spitting spreading COVID is as big a problem. It has always been a problem, but TB is seen as a poor man's disease and not a big deal to most people, right? The point is that TB is spread by spitting. So whether we launched on the platform of COVID, we are now looking at TB. We also have to remind people that spitting uh, reduces your swatch starvation ranking, which is also an important part of being proud of our cities, right? So uh, the, the movement was launched on the platform of COVID. We switched to TB, we switched to pride in our country, we switched to even things like beautiful earth, keep your city clean, why spit on the earth? On World Earth Day, I took out a poster, which I forgot to put out here. Now I'm going to show you a, a uh, cartoon and ask you to uh, to guess. On the left and on the right, you see two different sets of images. What's the difference between the four pictures on the left and the pictures on the right? Is there any significant difference that you see? Forget about the color of the shirt, the color of the spit and all of that. In terms of the response on the left and the response on the right. Anyone wants to unmute and get, tell me? In the second scenario, I think somebody is telling them not to, uh, you know, or giving them instructions saying you should not do it. In the first scenario, nobody is talking. Yes. About it. In the second scenario, all the four people are actually, you know, dissuading the person, stopping the person, putting their hand out to make it clear that, hey, you cannot spit, right? In the first one, it is the response of IGNO. And I, I, we did a survey in June 2020. Many people confess that before COVID, this is what they used to do because who wants to have, it is first of all so disgusting. As I say, you know, in thunder and lightning, which comes first, the thunder comes first and the lightning comes later. So the sound is first and the, the uh, later. Here it's the reverse. You first hear that fellow's throwing, clearing his throat and then the spitting happens. So most people have that warning, he's going to spit and they completely tune it out by then, engrossed in the phone, turn the other way, that man is going to get a crick in his neck. So we have mastered the response of keeping quiet and tuning it away. But think about it this way, if a guy is spitting 10 times and nobody says anything to him, why on earth will he stop spitting? But if 10 people say, hey, thukna ne, beda pa, no spitting, he may not stop spitting, but he's going to be clearer. And most of all, the message would go, would go ahead. So that is the most important part of what I request each and everyone. When you pass a spitter, there's no need to get into a fight, which is very easy. If you do put your hand like this, it will end up in a fight. The simplest way is, Beda pa, ugi ugi, corona. You say it with a smile. Uh, the, where, where the person is from North India, you can even say, Are pitch carry kyo? So the, many different ways. What I do is I ask them, but why are you spitting? Uh, no, I ask them, why are you wearing a mask? They look puzzled. I say, you don't want to get, get COVID. But what you did just now, COVID will spread very fast. You are, you are spitting. Don't you know spit is spread through COVID? And they look totally 
surprised because they don't know. And wherever possible, we have Puneet Rajkumar's video, which is actually a treasure for our state and our country. On the street, if I'll send you the link, if you have it on your phone, you see a person spitting. I know enough Kannada to say now, no di pa, no di, which means look at this, put on the video. The minute they see Puneet Rajkumar's face, they are already interested. The video is one and a half minute. Their jaw drops open because he's saying, don't spit, spitting spreads COVID. Spitting is going to make our streets filthy. We must all stop spitting. Now promise me you'll stop spitting. Puneet Rajkumar is a god today because to people, he is the hero who's no longer there. This uh, video appeal is so powerful. So I'm going to put in the chat, the link to our Stop India Spitting YouTube channel. If we had time, I could have played a few of the videos with you, with your permission, I'll end with my version of Imagine. I've done an Imagine, there's no spitting. I wrote the lyrics and I got professionals to sing. So uh, what we need to do, I think I can uh, stop this screen share, but just one more thing. So conversations with people, tell them that spitting is not okay. Uh, putting up signs, I'm showing you some of the signs that we, we have created signs in every language. So whichever language you want, we have signs so we have signs in 14 languages and people are able to pick and choose and if you have people who can fund the sides to put this on your ice cream cart pan shops in your area it actually basically that at the juncture at we which we are now after third wave as life goes back to normal not knowing will there be a fourth wave or not uh, this is what we need to do is make it clear that spitting is no longer acceptable. The last point, the third point is we have a lot of videos, posters. If you can keep sharing them on your groups, people come to know there is such a movement. And yes, this is a very useful, uh, uh, the minute you put it, see people no longer think it's a dirty subject to talk about. In my home, incidentally, it's dinner time conversation. You, we've got over the the uh, unpleasantness associated with it. And when people tell me, Hare is such a dirty subject, I say, how can we keep our streets clean if we can't talk about dirty subjects? Networking, so important. Trying to do something like this without funds or a larger team or even government support. Thankfully, we have that in Karnataka. Networking is so important. If listening to me, you feel, so people who can draw, people who can do dance, people who can sing, people who, who can create posters, People who say, hey, I want to organize a webinar for my RWA. So all the time I'm doing webinars for schools, colleges, those who are teaching, we are doing webinars for schools, schools are adopting it. Yesterday from Manipur, I got a wonderful update. They have uh, through somebody in Bangalore who connected me with an NGO, which, which works in 10 different schools in the, in the Northeast states across the seven states. They have launched this and they sent me pictures yesterday, which is really wonderful. I think I should uh, show you some of the pictures. So these are some of the signs that we have, some of the posters. These are some of the drives. See the vegetable cart in the corner. What a nice way of telling them uh, not to spit. It's putting it uh, there at the back of autos. We have put it in our pan shops. I know the pan shop guy called me, madam, you gave him, you didn't give me. Of course, those cost some funds. So if you are, uh, we can connect with the local rotary. Permanent signs are the best. So these are, uh, these are all the kinds of things that we can do. So to put up signs, soft copies are there in the link that I'm going to share in the chat. Share our videos, posters, and resources. Have conversations and please network. From my side, I'm going to end with imagine there's no spitting. I'll just play the first minute of it. Uh, I definitely think it's something you'll enjoy. Some of you may know Eric and his daughter. Imagine there's no spitting It's really hard to do The country loves the habit It's sad but well it's true we all ignore the problem COVID means this has to change Besides the COVID angle It's the country's only chance A golden opportunity 
stands It's really now or never To ease this habit out for good You may say I'm a dreamer But I'm not the only one Got to stop in yesterday. So let's come together as one. Okay, I'm going to stop my share here. And uh, from my side, I'm almost done. Just one last thing. Somebody asked me, why did you call it Stop India Spitting? Shouldn't it have been Stop Spitting India? So when I say Stop Spitting India, I'm only talking to those who spit and the rest tune it out. And that is the reason why India continues to spit and the problem is so big. But when I say Stop India Spitting, it means it's a call to action. Whether or not to spit, come play your role. So to each of you who have listened to what I've talked about, saving water, um, you know, reducing the waste we send out from our home, sending the bare minimum that needs to go to landfill. So when you're segregating, I forgot to say, yes, you can, with the fruit peels, make bioenzyme, with the uh, vegetable peels, you can make compost and you'll get the best earth smelling compost from your homes. It's not at all difficult. Anyone interested to uh, find out how, please connect with me or Matilda and we'll definitely be able to help you. And the third is on the spitting, the anti-spitting campaign. Um, it's been a problem for generations for our country. COVID gave literally a golden opportunity. We jumped in and in two years we have got our foot in the door, but we don't have anything of the kind of, you know, mass impact that we need to for something of this. So support is uh, welcome in every way. If you know someone who can sponsor signs or if you know younger groups who want to go out, do drives. We have a rap song which was created for us uh, by a Hindi, English Hindi rapper. It is a song which is the favorite song for flash mobs of us top India spitting drives across the country. We have partners across the country, Rotary, through Rotary, through many NGOs, through many schools, colleges, different parts of the country. And if any of you can connect me with anyone in any part of the country, I think that's also something that's very useful. So I'm going to stop talking, ask if anyone has a question. And in the chat, let me put the link uh, that you can access the, if you go to YouTube and you just type stop India spitting, I think you should be able to get the, um, the uh, link, but, but anyway, I'm sharing it here. Yeah. So the one is the, um, YouTube playlist. I may as well just show it, show you what it looks like. I'll not even take a minute here. So this is the This is our YouTube playlist. You can see all the videos, including Puneet Rajkumar's video. There's, there's an animated video in 10 languages. There's lots and lots of stuff. If there's somebody who's interested in helping to... Oh, so this is an RWA from HSR layout. All their re residents got together and they made a video. There's lots of interesting stuff here. And this is the drive link. So if you come to it, you'll see... So if Matilda gives me the recording under gallery, we'll have it going into webinars as well. Uh, we have posters, we have videos. So among in posters, many of the posters that I told you about are all here. You would have seen this poster. So uh, it, it's again a campaign poster. So that's it from me. I hope that what you heard made you realize as in the poster said, we all have a role to play and it's actually not difficult.